ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له لا شريك له في ربوبيته وألوهيته وأسمائه وصفاته وأشهر أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى أزواجه الطاهرات أمهات المؤمنين وعلى خلفاء الراشدين وعلى أصحابه أجمعين وعلى كل من اتبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين قال الله عز وجل في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار أما بعد All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Him, we thank Him, we glorify Him, we seek His help and aid And we ask Allah to forgive us We ask Allah to protect us We seek refuge in Allah From the evils of our own selves And from the sins that we commit Indeed, whoever Allah guides, there is none who can misguide. And whoever He causes to go astray, there is none who can guide. I testify that there is none deserves to be worshipped except Allah. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and final messenger. Verily, the best of speech is the book of Allah. The best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of religious matters are those that are innovated. And every religious innovation is a bid'ah. And every bid'ah is a misguidance. And every misguidance will be in the fire of hell. Wa billah. May Allah protect all of us from the fire of hell. Ameen ya Rabbal Alameen. My dear brothers and sisters, insha'Allah for our khutbah today, the topic, the virtues of the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Insha'Allah, with the sighting of the moon, in a day or two, insha'Allah, we will commence the month of Dhul Hijjah. And then we will enter the blessed days, the 10 blessed days of Dhul Hijjah, the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And these are special days. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Quran, Wal Fajr, Wal Ashur, that by the dawn and by the ten nights, referring to the ten days of Dhul Hijjah. In fact, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, Afdalu ayyamid dunya, ayyamul ashur, that the best days of the year are the days of the ten referring to the ten days that will soon be upon us the ten days of Dhul Hijjah 
The best days of the year are the ones that will soon be upon us, insha'Allah, once the moon is sighted and we begin the month of Dhul Hijjah. And here is a lesson for us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He chooses whatever days and whatever time and whatever places and He blesses them and He deposits in them favors and bounties and ni'mah. And these are days and time that we should capitalize. And Allah loves them and He deposits in them abundance of blessings and abundance of mercies and favors. And there is a wisdom behind that. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, among many other things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understands human nature. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He created us and He understands human nature and understands that we could be we, our daily worship to Him. Every day we pray to Allah, every day we make dua, every week we, we fast. This could be a little monotonous for us. It could be a little burden for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understands that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us different seasons and different times where you could capitalize and you could come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you had distanced yourself from Him. And humanity understands that well. And the business world understands that. This is why they have different sales and different promotions and they run specials. The same item they're selling all throughout the year. Then they have a sale and they have a promotion because they want to grab your attention and they want to grab your focus. And similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He understands that those who worship Allah can experience some monotony, can experience some burden in their worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understands that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us different seasons. Like Ramadan was a season. The Hajj season, these 10 days, it's a blessed season for us. Whereby we could capitalize. And whereby we could ask forgiveness for our sins. And if we were at a level of our Iman, come Ramadan, come Dhul Hijjah, the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, come any other day that Allah blesses, and any place that Allah blesses, and then you could elevate your Iman. Then you could raise it to different levels. These are blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And my brothers and my sisters, here is a season that's upon us. Here is a season where you can refocus and you can regain. You can regain and you could rejuvenate, regain your enthusiasm. You can ascend in your worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you have reached a certain level and you're stagnant in your iman, then here is a season for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with this coming season. The ten blessed days of Dhul Hijjah. And all who had lapses between these seasons and had committed injustice to themselves and against others, this is a season to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This season comes as a reminder to remind you that the door of Rahmah, the door of mercy of Allah is open. That even if you have committed sins, that don't despair. The season is coming where you can turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you could beg Allah to forgive you. And you could ask Allah to protect you from sins. So my brothers and my sisters, upon us is a blessed season that we should all capitalize. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that these are the best days of the year. And in another hadith narrated by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ma min ayyamin 
Al-amalu salih fiha Ahabbu ilallah Min hadhihil ayyam That there are no days On which righteous deeds Are more loved to Allah Than these days The days of the ten The ten days of Dhul Hijjah And in another hadith The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Ma min ayyamin A'zamu inda Allah Ahabbu ilallah Fi hadhihil ayyam that there are no greater days, more beloved days to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than these days, the days of the ten. The ten blessed days of Dhul Hijjah that will soon be upon us, insha'Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that there are no greater days, more beloved days to Allah than these ten days coming upon us. That is anything you do in these 10 days, any good deed you do in these 10 days, your salah, your obligatory salah, your voluntary salah, it is better than when it is done outside of these 10 days. Your fasting in them is better than any other voluntary fast outside of these 10 days. Your sadaqah, and any good deed done in these days, they are better than any time outside of these days. And the companions of the Prophet wasallam, they were eager to learn, and they were eager to confirm. They wanted more knowledge from the Prophet wasallam. So they asked him, they said, Walal jihad fi sabilillah, Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Walal jihadu fi sabilillah So they asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam O Prophet of Allah If we worship Allah in these ten days In Dhul Hijjah Are they better than jihad for the sake of Allah? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He answered Because the companions they understood that jihad they understood jihad as dhur'atus sanami al Islam. That jihad is the peak of Islam. This is why they question the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Illa rajulan kharaja bi nafsihi wa malihi thumma lam yarja' min thalik bi shay. That it would be better than jihad for the sake of Allah except if a man goes out for jihad and he doesn't return he loses both his life and his wealth so in other words meaning that a person who goes out for jihad and returns safe and sound in wealth and in body he could not have performed any better than if he had worshipped Allah in the ten days of Dhul Hijjah. So each and every one of us, we need to capitalize on these days. We need to take uh, capitalize and, and grab hold of this opportunity and take these days very seriously. The same way that we would, we would plan for Ramadan, the same way we should put a plan in place for these coming days that are upon us. If possible, take some time off from work. Take some time because you should treat these days as blessed days and better than even the days of Ramadan. And you may ask yourself, why are these days so special? And some of the ulama, they said that these days are so special because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He clumped, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala united the good deeds in these days. In these days, coming days, you have hajj, you have umrah, you have fasting, you have sadaqah, you have recitation of Quran, and you have udhiyah, zabiha animal sacrifice that there are no other days that you have all of these good deeds clumped together 
No other days that you have all of these, these good deeds combined together. And this is why they say that the ulama, they say that that's the reason why these days are better than other days throughout the year. And they said to compare that the days of Dhul Hijjah are even better than the days of Ramadan. Of course, the nights of Ramadan are better because the last 10 nights we have Laylatul Qadr, which is better than a thousand months. But when you come to the daytime, the days of Dhul Hijjah, they said that the daytime, the days of Dhul Hijjah are even better than the days of Ramadan. And here is another lesson for us that consider how much energies and how much good deeds you put in in the month of Ramadan. How much communication and motivation you motivate each other and how much good deeds you do in the month of Ramadan. And yet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that these days that are upon us, the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are better than Ramadan. So the question is, why do we perform less in these days? Here is a lesson for us, that in Ramadan, everyone is doing it. It's a social thing. Everyone is reminding each other. Your family is doing it, and this is why you're doing it. You see other people doing it. You see other people worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But my brothers and my sisters, in these days of Dhul Hijjah, not a lot of people are doing it. Not a lot of people are placing importance of these blessed days of Dhul Hijjah. Not a lot of people are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these blessed days of Dhul Hijjah, as they should have done in the month of Ramadan. And there is a lesson for, for, for us in this, that the lesson is that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you follow the command of Allah, follow the command of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you understand the prize and you understand the reward of it and you do it regardless if others are doing it or not. That you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regardless if others are not. In Ramadan, everyone is motivating each other. But in these days, the days of Dhul Hijjah, why people are not doing it is because they don't see others doing it. So the lesson from us is that you don't have to see others doing the worship of Allah before you could do it. And that's something that we should take a lesson from. That regardless if others are doing it, you don't have to worship Allah only when others are doing it. You worship Allah, you know the command of Allah, the command of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you know the prize and the reward for it, and you're doing it regardless of the encouragement, regardless if others are doing it or not. Because you know the prize these 10 days, you know what's the reward of it. So you do it regardless if others are not. So the best days will soon be upon us, bi'idhnillah. So what can we do in these days? What are so special about these days? What can be done in these blessed days? And one of the things that is special about them is the day of Arafah, the ninth of Dhul Hijjah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said about that day that Ma min yawmin akthara min ayyu'tikallahu fihi abdan min an nar min yawmi Arafah. That there is no day where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will free more slaves than the day of Arafah. That no other day in the year where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will free people from the hellfire except the day of Arafah. 
And the hadith continues, وَإِنَّهُ لَيَدْنُ ثُمَّ يُبَاهِ بِهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He comes close to the people in Arafah, when they are standing in Arafah. And He boasts about them with the angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala boasts to the angels about His servants that they are in Arafah. And He said, مَا أَرَادَ هَؤُلَىٰ that what are they seeking? What are my servants asking of me? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. He knows that we are asking for forgiveness. But he boasts to the angels. That what are they seeking from me? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angels. Ishhadu malaikati anni qad ghafartu lahum. That witness, be witnesses my angels that I have forgiven all of them. In another hadith, he said, hadith Qudsi, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that they came to me dusty and disheveled, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves this surrender and submission. That they came to him, and they left the dunya behind. They came to him asking for one thing, asking, Ya Allah, Forgive our, our sins and save us from the fire of hell and accept this Hajj. That's what they assemble in Arafah. That's what we make dua on the day of Arafah. To, to forgive our sins and to save us from the hell fire. And the Prophet said, Al Hajjul Mabrur, Laysa Lahu Jaza, Illa Al Jannah. That the Hajj. That is mabrur. That is upon righteousness. That is acceptable. There is no reward for it except Jannah. And there is no reward except paradise. But my brothers and my sisters, we are not far behind when we are not there performing the Hajj. We are not far behind the Idnillah and the Rahmah and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wide. So we can also do the things on the day of Arafah that will also attach us to the Rahmah and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the day of Arafah, by the way, if you didn't know already that the day of Arafah or the spot of Arafah, that when the Hujjaj, when you journey all the way to Arafah, to that spot, you're actually renewing your covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first spot that you had before you had a physical body. The first spot before you had a physical body in Alam al dhar That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extracted all of us from the back of Adam alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extracted all of humanity. All of humanity, Muslims, non-Muslims, everyone extracted from the back of Adam alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them, Alastu bi rabbikum? Am I not your Lord? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked us, Am I not your Lord? And everyone testifies. Qalu bala shahidna. That we testify, we say, certainly, O oh Allah, we testify that you are our Lord. And in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he spread them all in the plain of Arafah. That's the first spot on this earth that you witnessed. So when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is telling us that you're coming back to it, that you're coming back to the same exact spot that you at one time testify that Allah is your Lord. When you, you, you're coming back to the spot when you say, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. Labbaik la sharika laka Labbaik. Inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk la sharika lak. That you are saying, I am here, Ya Allah, responding to your command and renewing my covenant with you, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Aqulu kawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li walakum 
فاستغفروه انه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد my brothers and my sisters one of the first things that we should be doing during these days even before the start of the month of Dhul Hijjah that one of the things that we should be doing is Tawbah, seeking forgiveness. Tawbah, seeking forgiveness, asking Allah to forgive us. Because you want to take advantage of this opportunity and the bounty and the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you want to make Tawbah, you want to make repentance to Allah. And what is repentance? Repentance is coming back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Repentance is returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because sins, sins block your, sins block your way to come back to Allah. When you commit sins, sins block your way from the remembrance of Allah. So you want to make tawbah. You want to make repentance so that you could return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we want to take advantage and seek forgiveness for all of our sins. And also we should know that in various places and various times that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses, during these blessed times, sins committed during these times are multiplied. So you want to be careful also not to commit sins during these blessed days of Dhul Hijjah. During these blessed times, you don't want to commit sins. So you want to be careful. So when you reach these blessed times and places, you need to be sorry for the sins and you need to be remorse for the sins that you have committed. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the strength to stay away from sins during these times. Also, we should have a plan in place. As I mentioned before, before Ramadan, we always have a plan in place. We should have an ibadah plan. Put a plan in place where you uh, have some dua that you want to recite. Put a plan in place. Make some plan. Put a plan in place. You need to plan. And one of the first things that you can do is to receive the, these 10 days with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Increase the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these blessed days. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith that say often in them, Takbir, Allahu Akbar, Tahleel, La ilaha illallah, and Tahmeed, Alhamdulillah. That this is a general dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alham. That this is a forgotten sunnah. So we need to revive this sunnah. It is said that Abdullah ibn Umar and Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhum, that they used to go in the marketplaces and they used to recite this takbir loudly. And when the people heard them, they would start to recite this takbir also. So this is this dhikr, this is a, a sunnah that we should revive. As soon as the day is started, we should start with the dhikr of Allah. Loudly in places, audibly. So we should revive this sunnah. The second thing is your regular ibadah. That you have to always take care of the basics. Your salah, your regular salah on time. The sunnah as well. And if you have the time, try to pray in jama'ah. You cannot increase your worship in Allah with, with a neglecting the basics. Your salah is the basic. It is, it is fard. It is a duty upon you. So you have to take care of your salah. 
And one of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves is your salah, your prayer. So you can't engage in other types of worship and neglect your salah. So you need to focus and try to pray your salah on time with khushu. And if you have the time, pray your salah in jama'ah. Next is the fasting, the nine days of Dhul Hijjah. That here is an opportunity to fast. It is reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would fast the nine days of Dhul Hijjah. That it is better than any other voluntary fast outside of these ten days. It is better than any other voluntary fast on Allah alam. So take advantage and fast these nine days of Dhul Hijjah. The day of Arafah for the Hujjaj, not allowed to fast. But we who are not making Hajj, we should fast. The nine days of Dhul Hijjah, not the tenth, not on the day of Eid. It is haram to fast on the day of Eid. So we fast nine days of Dhul Hijjah. And of course, fasting on the day of Arafah. That if everything else fails, you should fast on the day of Arafah, on the ninth day of Dhul Hijjah. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Sawmu yawmi Arafah, yukaffiru sana wa ma qablaha. That fasting on the day of Arafah, the reward for it is two years past and coming year imagine my brothers and my sisters one single day of fasting huge reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one single day of fasting two years reward one past and one coming so small deed with huge reward and this is why I'm saying that this is the season that you have to take advantage of the blessings are multiplied. And next we need to make dua on the day of Arafah itself. That one of the most virtuous times to make dua is on the day of Arafah. That you can see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not deprive us from his blessings. That although we are not there performing the hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not deprive us from his, the blessings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his infinite mercy and blessings give us the opportunity to earn the same blessings as the ones who are making the hajj. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, Khayru dua dua yawmi arafah. Khayru dua dua yawmi arafah. That the best dua is the dua, the supplication, on the day of Arafah. And the frequent dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah lahul mulk wa lahul hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the best that I and the prophets had said is this dhikr. So we should surrender our obedience and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with dhikr and dua. In a sense, we mirror what they are doing over there. In a sense, we mirror the hujjaj, what they are doing over there. And as we reflect on the day of Arafah, it's a reminder of the day of Yawmul Qiyamah. As we reflect of, on the day of Arafah, it's a reflection of the day of judgment when we will be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and my sisters, the only difference is that now we have the time and the opportunity to make tawbah. But on the day of judgment, it will be too late. And then anything else that we could do from good deeds. And some of the scholars, they say that you should even uh, do charity, give charity every day of the 10 days. And also, they said that you should recite the Quran every day. Try to complete recitation of the Quran in these 10 days. It is simple. Three juz per day, if you have the time, inshallah. Three juz per day, 10 days, you finish recitation of the Quran. 
So inshallah take advantage. And then there is the biha, animal sacrifice. One of the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam is the slaughtering of an animal. It's a conformed sunnah from him. And some of the ulama, they said that it is an obligation. It is an obligation. It is wajib. But some of the, 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 the ulama, they said it is sunnah mu'akkadah. It is a strong sunnah. The, the Prophet wasallam told us, Man kana lahu sa'atun wa lam yudahi fala yaqrabanna musallana that the one who have the means to sacrifice and doesn't do it should not attend our musalla should not attend our place of, of prayer and here the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is emphasizing that if you can afford it then it is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that this is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and if you decide, bi idnillah, to, to sacrifice, and then also mirroring the hujjaj over there, that you have to do some of the things that are allowed and some that are disallowed. You stay away from as well. That once the days of uh, of the ten days starts. Then you also don't clip hairs, you don't cut your hair or you don't clip your nails. So in a sense you're feeling what they're feeling, the hujaj, and you're mirroring what they're doing. So you do not cut your hair or you do not clip your nails. That's if you're doing the udhiya, the dhabiha, the sacrifice. So as we proceed to make the sacrifice on the day of Eid, let us remember Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam who was asked to make the biggest sacrifice and which he fulfilled. So as we are making our smaller sacrifice, let us put the knife between our desires, between our sins, between our disobedience to Allah and cut it out always, trying to become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and my sisters, remember, it's our good deeds that will help us in our graves and on the day of judgment. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, enable us to worship you on these days and to put all our effort in your worship and help us to be sincere in our worship. Ya Allah, give us the opportunity to fast during these days and to remember you often and to pray on time and to spend for your sake and to do every good deed we are capable of. Ya Allah, improve our lives and the lives of our families in, during these days. Ya Allah, improve the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and accept from them their pilgrimage, their Hajj. Accept from them their Hajj and their Dua and admit them into Jannah, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Ya Allah, do not deprive us. Do not deprive us of the mercy you are giving them. Also release us from the hellfire and engulf us in your mercy. Ya Allah, grant us all the opportunity to go there who have not gone there before once this pandemic is over. Ya Allah, Allow us to fast on the day of Arafah and accept our dua on the day of Arafah and make it a blessed day for all of us. Ya Rabbal Alameen, Ya Allah, accept our sacrifice, our fasting, our qiyam, our recitation of Quran and all of our good deeds and overlook our faults and our shortcomings and grant us all your highest Jannah, Jannatul Firdausul A'la. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Allahumma aslih ahwal al-Muslimina fi Filistin. Allahumma aslih ahwal al-Muslimina fi Filistin. Allahumma aslih ahwal al-Muslimina fi kulli makan. Ya Zal Jalali wal Ikram. Allahumma innahum maglubuna fantasir lahum. ربنا أفرغ عليهم صبرا وثبت قدامهم وانصرهم على القوم الكافرين اللهم مكر لهم 
وَكْفِهِمْ بِمَا شِئْتَ إِنْ تَنْصُرْهُمْ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَهُمْ وَإِنْ تَخْذُلْهُمْ فَمَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَنْصُرْهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِكْ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ اللَّهُمَّ إِنَّا نَسْأَلُكَ الْجَنَّةَ وَمَا قَرَّبَ إِلَيْهَا مِنْ قَوْلٍ وَعَمَلٍ وَنَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنَ النَّارِ وَمَا قَرَّبَ إِلَيْهَا مِنْ قَوْلٍ وَعَمَلٍ اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك يا حي يا قيوم وبرحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأقيم الصلاة